These ribs scream, eat me. Big thanks to Kamada Joe for sponsoring this episode. I'm going to show you the three best ways to barbecue ribs. Barbecue ribs are probably the most iconical thing you can make on a barbecue. In the barbecue world, this is fast, this is easy, and you always have delicious end results. I selected these three beautiful slaps of ribs. These are St. Louis style cut ribs, and they're absolutely gorgeous. A good amount of fat and a lot of meat. The first rack of ribs is going to be grilled. It's going to go hotter and faster. Fast, we're gonna have delicious melting fat and a crunchy exterior. The second rack of ribs is gonna be dry smoked. I'm gonna put an amazing flavored seasoning on top. I'm gonna to smoke it until I have a delicious crust. And the inside is gonna be super juicy and tender. The third and final way of cooking ribs is gonna be juicy, sticky ribs with a delicious barbecue sauce. And after you finish watching this video, you know all you need to know about ribs. I'm gonna start with my old time favorite, the crunchy, delicious grilled ribs. The first step in the process, of course, are the ribs. St. Louis style cut ribs. With a good amount of meat to fat ratio, these things are gonna knock this recipe out of the park. I'm not gonna take that membrane off that sits on the back. That's gonna be my protection from drying out the meat. I'm gonna season the ribs on both sides with salt and pepper. For the seasoning, I'm using a light sea salt called Fleur de Sel. And for my pepper, I'm using fresh ground black pepper. I'm gonna let these ribs sit in their seasoning for around an hour. This is called a dry brine. <laughs> this thing is way too clean. It needs to be dirty and this is how I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna put a small layer of big block charcoal in my Kamado Joe Big Joe. I'm gonna put in three fire starters and light them up. I need all of the charcoal to be fully lit. That's why I'm gonna mix it up with my charcoal poke, making sure that everything is lit evenly. The ribs are done and as you can see the salt dissolved and it's become one giant beautiful slap of ribs that is ready to go on the barbecue. I'm gonna place it on the grill with the meat facing down and the bones facing up. I got my barbecue running at a temperature of 120 degrees Celsius. The ribs are on direct over the charcoal. There's no heat deflection, nothing. So all of the moisture that's coming out of the ribs and fat that is melting down is going into the charcoal and giving up little twirls of smoke. That's gonna smoke my ribs. I'm not gonna add any more smoke wood because that's just gonna raise up the heat. I'm gonna close the lid and I'm going to let the barbecue do its magic. With one and a half hours of grilling the ribs over direct heat, it's time to take a look. You can see that the ribs are starting to cook. We got a little bit of fuddling going on on the rib. That means we're starting to get at temperatures over 70 degrees Celsius. And we got a nice red color building up on the meat. I'm gonna flip this around so we can take a look at the other side. That is starting to look good. If you're smoking, you only get convection heat. Now you're also getting radiation heat. So these things are gonna cook way faster, but at the same time, they're gonna build up a much more beautiful crust on the outside. I'm gonna close this lid. I'm gonna let it continue to cook. Another hour has gone by on our beautiful grilled ribs. Beautiful mahogany red combined with caramelized fat. But all this time has gone by and how do I know when these ribs are done? The only way to figure that out is to either measure the temperature or stick it with a probe or like a toothpick. I'm just gonna use this probe. I'm gonna stick it in. And if it feels like sticking it into soft butter, I know that it's done. And if I want to, of course, I can also measure it. And if the ribs are running at a temperature of 92 degrees or above, I know they're done. Now you might think, wow, that's done, time to eat. No. Not time to eat yet. An important step in this process is letting these ribs rest. So, some aluminum foil. Rips on, fold to close in an insulated bag or in your cooler for at least 30 minutes. And this is the end result. A beautiful rack of ribs. Look absolutely amazing. You got that nice moist on the top. Smoke color, nice caramelization. This has everything that you're looking for in ribs. Now let's slice into this and take a look on the inside. A beautiful smoke ring, nice juicy fatty meat. Smoke ring on the sides. Absolutely beautiful. Ribs to die for. These ribs are cooked to perfection. The meat comes clean off the bone. We got a nice bite. The rest of the meat still stays on. It has a little bit of that bacon flavor that you're used to. Pork with salt, a little bit of pepper. Kind of have that smoky bacon stuff going on. 
absolutely delicious and a great way to cook ribs. The second way to cook ribs is a dry smoked ribs and these things are absolutely freaking delicious. Unlike with the grilled ribs, I'm going to remove the membrane. Then it's time to make a delicious barbecue rub. And one of my best recipes is the classic Pitmaster X barbecue rub. It consists of one part salt, one part paprika powder, one part onion powder and half a part garlic powder. Mix it up and you're good to go. Make sure you season those ribs perfectly. I want an even thick coats on all sides of the ribs, which means tops, bottom and sides. Unlike with the grilled ribs, we're going to set this up for indirect heat. And I'm going to start with an empty barbecue. I'm going to load it halfway up with charcoal. I'm going to put in one fire starter and light it up. Once I got a small fire going, I'm going to put in a chunk of beech tree. You could also use oak, but those two are a great smoke profile for dry smoked ribs. My Big Joe is ready for smoking. I'm gonna put my ribs on, set them right in the center, close the lid, and then it's time to dial in the Kamado Joe to hit that temperature of 120 degrees Celsius because this is very important for these ribs. All they're getting is smoke and smoke flavor. So I'm gonna set it to one stripe and a half open at the top and half a finger at the bottom. This means we're allowing all that air to flow out at the top of the barbecue, but we're restricting it at the bottom of the barbecue. So I'm controlling the whole thing with the bottom vent. If the temperature's too low, I'm going to open it up a little bit. If the temperature's too high, I'm going to close it up. The hot air and smoke can always escape. We're not going to have that dirty smoke hanging around. We're going to have clean smoke air ventilation and all that good stuff that make our ribs taste good. The dry ribs have been smoking for four hours and now, whoa, look at that beautiful color. I see beautiful bubbles on the side, indicating that the fat is melting and rendering down from the ribs. The color turned into a nice dark brown, drying up on the outside, but keeping the meat juicy on the inside. One of the indications that my ribs are done is that the ribs are starting to poke out. Now, of course, I want to back that up by putting in a thermometer, not measuring the temperature, but just poking to see what the resistance of the meat is. If it just slides in, I know that my ribs are done. I hardly want to feel any resistance at all. And that is the case, so it's time to let these ribs rest. <laughs> yes, that's an important... Yes, that's an important step with steaks, but it also goes for ribs. On a sheet of aluminum foil, I'm gonna seal them up and let them rest for half an hour. Beautiful rack of ribs. We got a good red smoke color shining through. That is one giant smoke ring. This is borderline ridiculous. You can't get much more smoke ring than this. I expose these ribs to smoke for a long period of time. And if you like that a little bit more intense smoke flavor, then this is the one you need to go for. These are close to fall apart tender, super, super soft. Of course, instantly you get that smoke flavor, you get that bark, but you get that softness from the ribs as well. And it's miles apart from the grilled ribs. Grilled ribs are a little bit more strong in their fiber still, whereas low and slow ribs are super soft. And that's what you get when you invest a little bit more time to cook slow ribs. And again, we have a beautiful St. Louis style cut of ribs. That membrane's gotta come off again. So I'm gonna start on one side, peel it off. I'm gonna hit it with the Pitmaster X classic barbecue rub, making sure I get a nice and even coat on all sides. I'm gonna be cooking my ribs on the Kamado Joe Big Joe. I'm gonna start with an empty barbecue and I'm gonna load it halfway up with charcoal. I'm gonna stick in one fire starter and light it up. Once my fire starters burn down and I got a small batch of charcoal that is lit, I'm placing on a chunk of apple smoke wood. This could be apple, it could be hickory, it could be anything you like. As I did with the dry smoked ribs, I set it up for indirect heat. We're gonna be smoking and we're not gonna have radiation heat. So all of it just goes around. All that beautiful smoke that we're getting from the apple wood goes around. Now I need to dial in the temperature, open up the top vent, one and a half, and close the bottom vent to around half a finger. And that's gonna ensure that I get a temperature of around 120 degrees for smoking. And once we hit that temperature, I'm gonna put on my ribs and let them smoke. 
The ribs have been smoking for three hours and look at that color. I got a beautiful mahogany red shining through on the meat. The little pieces of fat browned up nicely. And as you can see, the bones are not popping out yet. So it's time to lay out some aluminum foil, drizzle on a little bit of honey, place the ribs on with the bones pointing up, place on a few slabs of butter, wrap up the ribs. Now I'm gonna place these ribs back on the barbecue and I'm going to let them continue to cook for another hour. All the while keeping the temperature stable at 120 degrees Celsius. And after an hour of cooking in aluminum foil, these ribs need to be checked out. I gotta see what they look like, if they're almost fully cooked or not. I'm gonna perform the poke test again to see if they're ready or not. And if I have no resistance, they're done. And as you can see, these are absolutely freaking done. And I'm gonna make the barbecue sauce to finish it off with. I'm gonna start with a cup of ketchup, a quarter cup of apple juice, followed by a tablespoon of Worcester sauce, half a tablespoon of ground black pepper, a tablespoon of Pitmaster Extra's classic barbecue rub, a tablespoon of honey, and three tablespoons of cane sugar. Once it starts bubbling and it's all mixed up, the sauce is done and it's time to put it on the ribs. <laughs> Then the ribs go back on the barbecue and with the final touch of the brush, we're gonna close the lid and let that sauce stick to the ribs. Absolutely beautiful. Look at how good this looks. It is wiggly, it is juicy. The brown orange mahogany color looks freaking amazing. But now you should know the drill. We gotta let these ribs rest. Just give them a little time to cool down from 92 degrees to around 60 degrees and they become more juicy and tasty. Beautiful looking ribs, nice mahogany color, good looking smoke ring, nice fatty, super delicious, sticky on your fingers when you feel to the touch, crunchy crust on the outside. Mm. Super soft, beautiful, delicious, smoky ribs that are almost fall off the bone ready. So that bone is nice and clean. Fantastic ribs. And there you have it, three ways to cook your ribs. There's no one set way to do it. It's not just, oh, this is barbecue, this isn't barbecue. Grilling ribs is as old as cooking. Up on the fire. That's how it went. The second rack of ribs might be a little bit primitive, but with that naked smoking, you get a beautiful crust on the outside and you get a lot of smoke penetration into the meat. There's nothing better than that. It's just smoke, barbecue, honest food. And if you wanna go full blown barbecue, sweetness, stickiness, then you gotta go for the last method. That's gonna make shiny ribs, sticky stuff, juicy, tender, creamy, rich, it's all there. You can try all of these ribs and let me know down below which one you think is best.